Alright, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Suki. He made a piece of blue glass moon, man. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Last time, we met Noel. And, uh, it was. She was something. <laughs> she was something. She definitely was something. Man, there we go. Got my, my G Fuel ready. Ah, wow, what the fuck? I forgot. It, it's blue. That's why you can't really. Oh, well, you can't see my hand, though. I guess you can. Uh, but it is blue. But I did get G Fuel today. No no water, so here we go. Let's do it. Oh, man. I just love me a nice, cool... Uh, What is it? I love me a nice, tall uh, cup of... You know, it's just nice, refreshing cup of... <laughs> if you get that reference somewhere, leave a like. <clears throat> but here we go. Enough goofing off. Mm. All right, where do we last left off? Uh, okay, so we met Noel. We are back home. We actually no. We also Shiki was like in some weird, like trance, days type thing, and we met uh that purple haired girl. Uh, I think her name's like Mio. I think that's what you say. Uh, from what I remember, but here we go. It's ten o'clock. The lights in the room go out automatically. Apparently, things are set up so all the lights in the mansion go out when it hits 10, aside from those in the office. Manually fibbing the switch should turn on a room's lights back on again, but that's intended for emergencies only. They probably catch me if, I'm, if I try to use my room's night, uh, nightstand light. I'm not allowed to go outside my room after 10 either. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I could buy my own light. Like a night light. Just plugs in on the wall. <laughs> they have the they have little foldable ones about the size of a cell phone these days. Foldable. I think I've seen those? Interesting. This is just way too early for lights out anyway, so, uh anyway you slice it. Oh, I guess I really don't need one. I don't stay up that late anyway. I'll bet they let me stay up later when exam season comes around. I change into the clean pajama set aside for me and crawl into bed. Ever since I was injured in that accident, part of me has resisted lying down like this. I used to hate letting my body get comfortable, and even more so if it meant sleeping in uh, in a soft bed. From what I hear, it's caused a lot of trouble for Keiko when I first stayed with the Arimas. I've always slept like a rock, but I hated going to sleep. Well, uh, I'm gonna crash. I announced it to myself, even though it should go without saying. I take off my glasses and close my eyes. I only had trouble sleeping when I was a child. Now, once I close my eyes, I can fall asleep just as well as... I'm assuming he just immediately went to sleep. <laughs> kind of was like, yeah, you know, it's like... Uh... Oh, mysterious wolf in the night. Turn up my volume. A strange cry washes over my ears like a wave. The howling of an animal. It's too high to be a dog. A werewolf? Are there werewolves in Tsukihime? And I know it's vampires, but... <laughs> or uh, dead apostles, if you want to be that person. It rings in my eardrums. Is it howling at the moon? Probably. There's a gnawing pain in my stomach. The howling brings on a headache. I mean, to be fair, I'd be annoyed as shit too if I'm trying to sleep and all here's a fucking dog howling at the night. The sound doesn't stop. It's like a bullet rattling around the inside of my skull. Not the analogy I would use, but you know. I just keep going. <laughs> Uh, shut the hell up. 
I throw on my glasses and open my eyes. The dog is still uh, howling somewhere outside the window. The clock has just struck 11. How am I supposed to sleep like this? Damn it. What the hell is that noise? It sounds like it's coming from outside the mansion. I seriously doubt I can fall asleep like this. It's actually inside the mansion? That'd be crazy. <laughs> that actually would be scary as shit. The howling's inside the mansion and not outside the mansion. Uh, I guess I don't have much of a choice here. I can't exactly call the cops about a dog being loud. I get up from bed and change into my school uniform. Do you not have any, you know, recreational clothing, my man? You know, like casual shit? I'm sure you do. <laughs> I don't think you need to put on your school uniform. And wasn't Heatsway supposed to clean that? Aren't she dead before y'all went to bed? The others must have trouble sleeping too. I'm the only man in the mansion, so I should go see what's happening. Oh, I just got a low battery signal on my on my headphones. Hopefully it'll survive the hour. I got outside. The night is still eerily is eerily still like it's been frozen in place the moon is hidden behind the clouds even the light from the lamppost is perfectly constant like splotches of fallen paint on canvas actually uh where is may oh here it is it's like that one song what's it called uh werewolf in london i'm gonna be honest with y'all i think that song fucking sucks <laughs> Like, that is a terrible song. Alright, there we go. Well, yeah, I mean, you can see the chord, but as long as it doesn't get in my way. Strangely enough, the howling seems weaker now that I'm outside. What I just said? What did I just say? What the hell? Or is it fading away? It doesn't matter. The nagging pain is cause, uh, is, it, what it's causing isn't in my ears, but my brain and eyes. Hearing it sets my heart pumping and my whole body on edge, a feeling I cannot control at all. Uh, shut up. Each step feels heavy. I've lost some feeling in the tips of my fingers. Then, I realize something. I can see my breath. A pale white against the cold. It's quiet outside the estate. Like someone hit the pause button. My shadow is the only thing moving in this motion motionless world. I feel thirsty for some reason. The high walls bordering the estate stretch along the darkened road. I warm my numbing fingers with my breath. Walking towards where I suspect the dogs have gathered. Huh? All thought ceases. Under the distant streetlight is something I've never seen before. Something no one should ever see. An incomprehensible sight. A dog, half melted. I won't spoil who that is, but I know who it is, so. What is that? A long blade pointed downward. What? What is that? A howl, dissolving with the dog. What is that? Damn. You have to do it like that, my man. A blade, stabbing down. What is that? A roar that makes me question my sanity. Or maybe a sudden gale. As the wave threatening to rupture my eardrums disappears, so does the howling and the dog along with it. Like they never existed in the first place. Dissolved into nothingness without a trace. Is this an illusion? 
what am I what I'm seeing is an illusion that or a dream a hallucination that or a dream is this an illusion a strange figure stands under the night uh, under the light cut out from the darkness is it wearing a coat the silhouette in the thick coat doesn't seem to have noticed me standing here yet my throat grow, uh, grows dry my whole body is sweating the night air sticks to my skin despite just standing here I feel a pressure like I'm at the bottom of the ocean. This hot in Holland. What? Okay, first of all, can I just say that, again, I know who this character is. I won't spoil it for you if you don't know who it is. If you do know, then for just don't worry about it. But the voice actor, Kenjiro Suda, I'm not gay, but that man, that man's voice is, oof, that man's voice it, it hits my soul, bro. I love that man's voice. He also voices um, Tiziano from uh, JoJo Part 5. And he voices... Uh, I forgot the character's name, but he's also... He does a he voices a monster in um, Kamen Rider Gaim, which is my first ever Kamen Rider. But I absolutely love this man's voice. His voice is just... Mm. Mm. It just hits, bro. Back to the story. <laughs> <laughs> a language from a far off land enters my ears. What? Okay, you know the side effect. What if the jo what if Jorno's theme just starts playing right then and there? That would have been insane. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind when I heard that. When I heard that little static effect, I'm so dizzy. It feels like I could pass out. I'm narrowly able to muster some strength in my legs and prevent myself from falling. Then. All I see is an ordinary, empty public road. I gasp as my lungs hungrily suck in oxygen. I hadn't noticed, but it seems like I hadn't been properly breathing ever since I left the main gate. There's no howling to be heard anymore. I leave behind the terrible vision I've seen. My man said, I... Oof. I return to my room. It didn't seem like the others are still awake. I guess I was the only one bothered by the howling. It's strange. My head is still pounding. Huh? Why am I shaking? That's, a, that's what you call anxiety, my friend. My fingers are quivering. My whole body shivers. My spine is freezing. If I were to compare it to something, it's like my spinal cord has been torn out and replaced with a pillar of ice. Hmm. Sub-Zero? I was just playing Mortal Kombat, man. <laughs> I just recorded a Mortal Kombat video. Nazi hits me like a sack of bricks. Is this my usual anemia? It feels like the contents of my head are being bumped out onto the floor. I see something I didn't want to see on the way down. Even with my glasses on, I can still see the lines. Bile rises in my throat as my eyes recoil from the sight. The result of trying to avoid seeing them these past seven years. My mind can't take this. I feel sick. The dizziness from an anemia has my stomach trying to escape through my throat. This can't be happening. What the hell's going on? I don't understand. As long as my eyes are open, the scribbles continue to evade my senses. Close your eyes, big man. This is all... This is just a bad dream. I somehow make it to my bed. Yes, I should just go to sleep. That's the quickest way to deny the reality in front of me. My body won't move how I want it to, so I'll just stay like this, like a corpse. I'll just sleep, like a puppet with his strings cut. Hmm, insane. 
I mean, that man's having some crazy dreams. Do I want to save my progress? Well, yes, I do. Are we on day three now? Ah, we are. Day three. Day three, impulse inversion. It was something Master once told me. The lines that I see are the parts that break more easily. The same as how a human body has weaknesses, like at the joints or the eyes. I could cut anything without worrying about resistance or friction, just by lightly tracing the lines of the blade. Whether it's a human body or inanimate objects, there are lines in all that I see. Listen to me, Shiki. Everything was designed to a fate of breaking down. As long as something has a form, it has to meet the this end, right? In other words, the world is stitched up. It's only ever a step away from breaking apart. Say the scribbles run across the earth. Then one day, for maybe no reason at all, the ground could come apart and everything would break. Yeah, we call that an earthquake here. <laughs> call that the tectonic plates. <laughs> That's what my reality is like. We humans are even more fragile. Injury and healing, aging and growth, prosperity and decline, all those changes lead us closer to the end. I never felt more thankful for Master's glasses than when I first came to understand these words. I couldn't have survived if I had to see these lines all the time. Fragile lines in all things. An unbound, unstable world. Nothing can be gained from seeing. Uh, nothing can be gained from seeing them. Nothing at all. I don't like how they broke up the sentence there. <laughs> Man, it's morning. I awake from an old memory, feeling the light through my eyelids. I reach over to the other side of the bed. My glasses are... gone? A worry creeps in. I try the other side of the pillow, where I find my glasses waiting for me. I usually make sure to uh, place them more uh, on, the, on my left. It must be because of that awful headache I had last night. I put on my glasses before I open my eyes. The ritual will probably look strange to anyone who saw it, but I try to avoid seeing the lines from the moment I wake up. Good morning, Master Shiki. It's like, what the fuck? You're in my room? <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> I look over towards the source of the voice to find a girl in a maid uniform standing by the wall. I didn't notice her. It seems she's been there for a while, too. She must have been here for the same reason as yesterday. To make sure I don't oversleep. It's like, were you? Were you watching me sleep? <laughs> That's a little creepy. You could wake me up, you know? I don't. I don't mind it. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to watch me sleep. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I was so surprised. I, I isn't like your. It's your third day here, man. I actually, no, your second day here. So. Ah, morning, Hisui. Ah, thanks for waking me up. Please, think nothing of it. It is simply one of my duties. Hisui lowers her head solemnly. She stops and rises, uh, raises it back up in one fluid motion. 
驚かすのが仕事ということではなく I apologize for surprising you It was not my intention I mean to be fair you Uh, I mean, I would be scared too if I woke up and someone was just standing in my room staring at me, you know? <laughs> I mean, you, you can knock. You can knock on the door. <laughs> I will endeavor to avoid such an occurrence in the future. Or endeavor, there you go. I said like the、uh, dude from、uh, My Hero. <laughs> He's a little,、uh, could be a little strange sometimes. I get the impression that. Well, she's a perfect maid. She's not quite used to speaking with people. Yeah, That's not really your fault, Hisui. I should start getting used to this stuff by now. I get up from the bed and realize that I'm wearing pajamas. I remember changing into my uniform to see what was up with that howling. And then I pass out on the bed after coming back. Weird. I thought, I, for sure, I thought for sure I fell asleep in my uniform. Yes. It is improper and, un and unhealthy to wear clothes you had on all day to bed. So I called my sister and had her change you into your pajamas. That's a little crazy. He sweet plainly explains what happened. Oh, that makes sense. They changed my clothes for me. I don't know if there is anything especially unhealthy about sleeping in my uniform, but I guess I could, but I guess I could get wrinkled. They sure are professional maids. Hold up. You changed my clothes? I quickly checked my pants and underwear. They both, they both look brand new. That's insane, dog. h e s w e e Yes, Master Shiki. Yes, Master Shiki. I appreciate you looking out for me, but please just wake me up next time. I can change on my own, you know? I look down, embarrassed. He's w e e on the other hand, simply nods in affirmation. Your school uniform is folded here and ready for you. Please come to the parlor after you're finished changing. How did that not wake me up? Was I really that exhausted? There's no point dwelling on it. I can't change what's already happened. I should change and head down for breakfast. My uniform is folded up neatly. She even gone to the trouble of ironing the shirt. I feel like putting on a new shirt for the first time. Aki and Kohaku are already in the parlor. Having,、uh, having probably finished breakfast some time ago, Aki is gracefully, gracefully sipping on a cup of tea. I greet the both of them. Morning, you two. Good morning, Shiki. Pohaku smiles radiantly, her homely white apron accentuating the warmth she naturally exudes. Aki, a on the other hand, only glances my way. Another late morning, I see. Hope you haven't confused today for a weekend. No mercy. Not even in the morning. Late morning. It's still barely 7 o'clock. <laughs> It's only a 30 minute walk to school. If anything, I woke up earlier than usual. You only need 10 minutes to eat. You're not a starving dog. 
I expect you to eat at an appropriate pace. You know, I... Aki wastes no time in pummeling my defenses. Her lightning-quick reflexes and razor-sharp rebukes ought to be feared. Like playing tennis with a wall, everything I throw at her comes right back at me. That's a funny analogy. Yes? <laughs> Were you going to say something? N no. Nope. Nothing at all. More importantly, you don't need to call me a dog. That reminds me. I should ask about the dog from last night. Hey, Akia. About last night. Is it like that or a lot around here? Excuse me. You know of last night. I bet you had trouble sleeping too, right? I slept quite well. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. I'm talking about that dog. It wouldn't stop howling, you know, around 11? Aki and Kohaku share a glance before casting a concerned gaze in my direction. They're looking at me like I'm a madman. Never mind, I'll ask someone else. Wasn't it loud last night, Kohaku? Uh, I'm not sure I know what you mean. It was windy, but the only thing out of the ordinary I found on my nightly rounds was you sleeping in your school uniform. Oh yeah, that. I'll, uh, I'll make sure that never happens again. Hmm, did something happen, Kohaku? Oh, it's nothing to worry about. Shiki just has some bad sleeping habits. Kohaku dodges the question with a smile. You two really didn't notice anything? It was awful. The dog must have held for 30 minutes straight. Oh, that certainly does sound rough. I can't, I can't quite tell if she actually believes me or not. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> hmm? I don't recall anything of the sort. What about you, Kohaku? Sorry, Shiki. But I don't think there was anything like that last night. Then it's settled. The only other case I can think of is that you dreamed that you were being barked at by a dog. <laughs> With how confident they both seem, I'm starting to doubt myself now. Now to think about it, it was weird. There wasn't even a dog when I went to look, there was... No. There couldn't have been anyone. When they say it like that, it really does feel more like a dream. It must be because you still haven't or you still have yet to grow accustomed to life here. Yeah, if you hear it again tonight, perhaps we'll have to get a ferocious guard dog. 
And my a malice smile creeps onto Aki's lips. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I must be going now. Please try not to be attacked by any dogs on the way to school, Shiki. Akio leaves a parlor with a graceful stride. Kohaku bows to me before leaving to see her off. I eat breakfast in the dining room and exit to the lobby. Isui follows behind me with my bag in hand. I told her I could carry it on my own, but she insisted she hold it at least until the entrance. I guess Aki isn't the only one that has me at a disadvantage. Or maybe in Hisui's case, I'm just soft. Aki beats me over the head with her ironclad logic. It's also hard to de defy her when her status holds more weight around here than mine. It's the opposite when it comes to Hisui though. I'm in the position where I can boss Hisui around, but I couldn't bring myself to. There's something about the way she looks at me. I just want to listen to whatever she says. Shiki, Shiki, uh, please wait a moment. Kohaku hurries down the steps from the second floor. He trips, falls. <laughs> Hisui draws back as Kohaku approaches. Huh? Weren't she just with Akia Kohaku? Mistress Akia takes a car to school. This morning, she allowed me to stay behind so I could deliver this to you. Deliver something? To me? Yes. We received a package from the Arima household yesterday. A bright smile flashes across Kohaku's face. Really? I'm positive I brought all my things over already. Everything used there belonged to the Arimas. I don't actually own much aside from my clothes. Is that so? But this arrived for you. Kohaku hands me a narrow wooden box, about 20 centimeters in length. It's light. Kohaku, I, I've never seen this before in my life. Apparently, it was left to you in your father's will. He wanted you to have it. Really? That old man left me th uh, left this for me? That hardly seems real. Why would the man who forced me out seven years ago leave me something in his will? Well, whatever. Would you mind leaving it in, the, in my room, Kohaku? Kohaku's eyes are fixated on the box, curiosity plastered all over her face. She's like a kid staring at a birthday present. Or maybe she is a kid. Alright, alright. I can see you're dying to know what's inside. Hmm. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just happen to be a little curious. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say. I'll open it then. One, two. The box opens with a dry clack. Inside is a thin iron shaft, about 15 centimeters long. It's a... It's a metal stick? It's a plain thing, unadorned, but it seems to show signs of heavy use. My father must must have really not cared for me if he left, this, uh, if he left me something like this. And I seem to recall the rod he used to be thicker and less decorated. 
wrong there, Shiki. Isn't this a fruit knife? Kohaku takes the iron shaft out of the box. You know, like a switchblade. I'm more of a butterfly knife type of guy. I have like two. Uh, one reel and one like a trainer. I haven't used them in a time and I need to go back to doing some butterfly knife tricks. But I also love stilettos. The knives, not the shoes. Those I like those. Oh, I like those too. I don't wear them personally. <laughs> I, I like I like butterfly knives and I like stiletto knives. Those are cream. I actually had a stiletto knife. I think about it. I think it broke on me though, unfortunately, which sucks because it was nice. It was like a black blade and the handle was like the wood grain. Oof, it was gorgeous. I think it's like that. Here, watch this. Oh fuck. With a metallic noise, a 10 centimeter blade shoots out. Huh. It really is a knife. The inside looks more modern, though the outside looks quite old and worn. Look, it's even described what the year it was made. Kohaku retracts the blade and hands me the knife. She's right. There's a number just below the grip. The character for seven read Nana, or Shichi, and the number for night, Yoru, or... Yeah. Ooh. Nana. Yeah? Get it? Nania? Come on. Come on, people. Should know this. Red Nana. It, does anybody here read that? Red Nana? I've been, I've been meaning to read that, and I, I know that's like... Apparently people say that's like lesbian berserk. <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's like a funny analogy. Yoru or Yeah. Sichi Yoru doesn't have that ring as Nania. That isn't a year. I believe it's intended to be read as Nanasu Yoru, Seven Nights. Whoa. I look back to see Hisui standing directly behind me, sneaking a glimpse at the knife. Oh, jeez. Scared me, Hisui. You don't have to peek around me. Here, take a look. Oh. I, I'm very sorry. It was just so lovely. I couldn't help myself. I don't know about that. Or lovely. I don't know about that. Looks like an old, dull knife to me. Oh, I guess it is. I don't know if it's old, dull knife to me. I don't know if it's old, dull knife to me. I don't know if it's old, dull knife to me. Not at all. This is a beautiful, uh, this is beautifully made. It has, the, it has the hallmarks of a distinguished blade. Hmm, you think? I really don't see it. Seeing Hisui so resolute about it has stirred my own curiosity. Yeah. Not a bad memento now that I look at it. Seven Knights. Could it be the name of the knife? I don't think many people will be bothered by naming a knife, but it doesn't it does seem like a relic from a different time. What was the year? We got the name of it, but what the fuck was the year? I still weigh it in my bag. I, it may technically be against the law to carry it around, but one day couldn't hurt. I'll write to Arihiko about it. Though that depends if he actually comes to school or not. Master Shiki, are you right on the time? Ah, shoot. Gotta get going, don't I? See you, Kohaku. And thanks for the package. Gohaku waves as we leave. 
Seven Nights. That might be the title of this video. Who knows? We'll see. I notice a commotion nearby. We uh, nearby after we exit the main gate. Huh. Wonder what's going on over there. Bloodstains were found on the road this morning. Blood? Just over there? Yes. There were some on the walls of the estate as well. The police visited the mansion with some questions while you were asleep. Does that mean someone died out here? No. The bloodstains were all that was found. They were on the east side of the estate. That's where I went to look last night. Blood. A crimson red that stains anything it touches. I don't remember seeing anything that vivid last night. The only things here were black of night and the biting cold. The warmth of blood was nowhere to be found. Oh, buddy, that was all too real. Master Shiki? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, it's, um, it's nothing. I should get going. Thanks for seeing me off. Have a nice day. Please, be, uh, be careful on your way to school. He's we bounds deeply. Bows deeply. All I'm doing is going to school, but I suppose this is He Sui's way of showing concern for my condition. Thanks. I will. You take care too. I think Hisui is that wave goodbye and leave. The front gate behind. Or leave the front gate behind. Ooh. That hallucination was a little too real. Hmm. It's just before homeroom. The classroom is, li is as lively as ever, or as always. The boys and girls are still locked in a battle over Miss Noel. Thankfully, I don't belong to either camp. I amble over to my I amble over to my desk, middle of nowhere. What? In the middle of no man's land, in. Yo, Yo, you're late, Shiggy. Waiting at my window side desk is someone who looks totally out of place in this morning. Not only that. Good morning, Tono. This was someone even more unexpected. CL? What are you doing in our classroom? Is this so unusual? I just stopped by because I was wondering if you were around. It's often not common. Third years never come down to the other classrooms. I thought if it'd be embarrassing for you to be seen with us. Really? I didn't think you were the one to sweat over the little things. I don't mind at all, though. Uh, we're all part of the same school, after all. What a saint. I'm at a loss for words. Well, I won't be held accountable if you're late for class. The third year classrooms are pretty far. See, I'll not seriously. No need to worry about that. I may not look uh, may, what, I may not look like it, but I'm pretty light on my feet. I can make it down the stairs and back to my own classroom in under a minute. He's like, that's cool, I wish I can, but I'll fucking die if I did that. 
She pops out her chest with pride. Tough in body and soul. Hey, line up, Tono. She's here because she wants to be. Arihiko being Arihiko, and just sitting on my desk without a care in the world, fully immersed in his chat with CL. I don't mind, but you better get going once there's two minutes to the homeroom. Suddenly, feeling a wave of fatigue, I voice my discontent and sit down. Tono doesn't seem to be in a very good mood today, Inoue. Yep. I guess he isn't vibing with his new place. Tono's usually pretty chill, but he's got a bad habit of letting stuff he doesn't understand get him worked up. Really? He always struck me as the type to keep his cool. Ah, uh, not at all. He may look quiet, but he'll explode every now and again. It happens all the time, actually. He snaps. Just like that. He snaps, you say. So, so. Yep. You don't want to be around when he goes off, so you better stay on the lookout. Arahiko and CL continue whispering in front of me. You're gonna keep if you're gonna if you're gonna keep trading secrets, could you do it in the hall instead of my instead of next to my desk? I can't hear every word and it's giving me a headache. Wait, you mean you can hear us? Yeah, no shit, asshole. You're fucking right next to me. What the hell do you mean I can't hear you? What? <laughs> You're all. You, weren't, didn't it just say he was sitting on his desk? Like, come on now. Yeah, I can. I didn't just hear you. I can also see you try to slip a. What? I can also see when you tried to slip a hand around CL's waist under the guise of having your little discussion. Now she immediately slapped it away. If anything, I'm less angry, more disappointed at the sham of a performance. Ciel is covering her mouth with her hands, unsure how serious we are. Jamie actually intends to trade secrets. Oh, Man, classic nerd right down to the four eyes part. You know, it's you know it's rude to eavesdrop on a conversation between a gentleman and a lady. <laughs> Getting desperate, huh? Is your new sister really that hot? Can you introduce me sometime? Arihiko. Are you trying to pick a fight? そんなわけないだろう。俺と東野は輝かしい友人じゃないか。気に食わなけりゃ親とだって殴り合うが、親友とだけは戦わないってのがポリシーなわけ。基本、共に生きる男なんだ、俺。Of course not. We're buds. I'd fight my own parents before I ever fight you. That's my policy. A man's gotta have a code, you know. Wow. A code that puts classmates over your own parents. That's messed up. Hmm, I see. Your policy sucks. Ah, there's the real jackass Tono I know. You look so pathetic, I was worried about you. My butt pats me hard on the back. You were worried about me. You of all people. Hey now, don't ruin it. 
Everybody knows you're supposed to play it cool here. He, th he thwaps my back some more. Thwaps. I thought I would never have to fucking read that. I've said that word before, unironically, but <laughs> to read it in a in a fucking no in a visual novel is funny. I've known Orihiko for a long time, but there's still a lot about him that surprises me. Anyway, how's that new house then? You look pretty stressed out to me. <sighs> I don't know. I had a weird dream last night. When I told everyone about it, they looked at me like I was crazy. Hmm, hmm. That can't be good. Arihiko nods in sympathy. I turned to the source of the silence. Seal is watching our stupid conversation unfold with a serious look on her face. Senpai? Uh, Ciel? Tono-kun, yappari Inui-kun to naka ga iin desu ne. You two sure do get along well. Honki desu ka, senpai? Ima no mite sou omoeru nante. Sono megane wa doga atte nai desu ne. You really think so? Maybe you should get those glasses checked. Sanna koto nai desu. Tono-kun. I do think so. You seem more relaxed around Inui. I can tell you really trust him. For some reason, a bright smile stretches across her face. Hmm? Arihiko and I look at each other's eyes and tilt our heads. Then they kiss. <laughs> That'd be crazy. What a twist of the story. Uh, I'm jealous. I wish I had friends that I could be so open around. Still outside a sigh of genuine admiration. So Seriously? Arahiko and I grimace in unison. Oops. Look at the time. I, I'm I'm gonna head back. Oh, did you see the news this morning, Tono? I didn't. I've been so busy, I haven't had I haven't had a chance. So this guy. I see. I see. I'll just be frank then. They were talking about a big mansion this morning. Is that your house? Huh? Hisui didn't mention that the police came around to ask some questions. Ah, uh, yeah. That's probably us. I heard the cops were around this morning. I see. Don't go playing outside at night too much, okay? What the fuck does that mean? What do you mean... To, what, did you see me last night, you fucking weirdo? Seal <laughs> dashes out of the room. We watch her leave in silence. Yeah, so Tono. What? I hope you're not about to ask me something pointless. It ain't pointless at all, but I gotta ask, since when you were so tight with CL that she goes out of her way to see you, because that's how the story is, my man. Well, I know, like I know the answer to that. We only just started talking recently. She probably just came here on a whim. And hey, you seem like you get pretty, uh, you do well, what? You get along well with her pretty well. You're, what the fuck? I'm sorry, that was just me fucking up reading. And hey, you seem like you get along with, uh, with her pretty well yourself. <laughs> if only. 
It took a whole week just to get her to remember my name. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound like you at all. Don't you usually give up on girls who don't show any interest after the first day? I thought that was another one of your policies or whatever. Well, most girls, yeah. But she ain't most girls. I haven't told you, but she's totally my type. Oof, uh, I got something to tell you, my man. <laughs> An older woman who looks good in glasses, right? Arahiko blushes. Ah, so you knew, comrade. Yep. You heard her just now. We're the best of friends, apparently. I could read you like a book. She is cute, though. I doubt many guys could talk to her without falling for her, me included. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Ah, so you probably begun to understand how cute she is. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, we're friends, right? It makes sense that we have similar tastes. No surprise we'd be into the same type of girl. Our eyes meet. After a brief but meaningful moment, Arihiko nods solemnly. <laughs> oh. It's been nice knowing you, bud. <sighs> yep, sure has. I set him off with a wave. Just then, the bell for a homeroom begins. Alright, no one should be hopping in. Okay, never mind. Morning classes end and lunch break begins. Where should I grab lunch? Let's see. Well, I went to the cafeteria last time. Let's just let's just stay in the classroom this time. Why not? I guess I'll eat in the classroom. But I don't have much of an appetite today. Whenever I feel like this, I always throw up if I eat it if I eat up what I always throw up if I eat anything. The best course of action was just to be rest in the classroom, but <laughs> Yo, Shiki, let's go get lunch. Seeing that mopey face has obliterated any appetite I did have. Okay, I'm definitely skipping lunch. Thanks for that, Arhiko. Sorry, but I'm gonna pass. You're on your own today. What the hell, bro? Seem to be getting worse and worse. <laughs> what? Is your new royal lifestyle not to your liking? Oh, come on. There's nothing royal about it. No, wait. Maybe you're right. If that's not royal living, then what is? Even the bathroom is ridiculous. It's bigger than your whole place. Fancier, too. <laughs> You're shitting me. Damn. Who would want to live like that? Actually, I take it back. Arihiko is a breath of fresh air. It's nice to talk to someone who can relate. Well... I can't actually do much about the size of the place. But if I wake up at 7, they complain I'm late. Uh, the curfew is 8 o'clock, and if I stay over somewhere without permission, I get grilled about it to no end. It's like I'm living in a prison. 
No? So it was already a Hanashi Janega. Huh. Well, that might be a good thing in a way. Candy Taisa, Bambanzai. Wakamuma Moto Titani Kinetona. Wakai Uchkara Dakusha, Lokuna Otona in Arnazo. The irony of this, of this sentence. <laughs> Long live the system. Kids these days need more structure in their lives. If they start getting lazy from a young age, they'll end up becoming bums. Couldn't agree more. Feels more especially true coming from you. He's loving proof of that argument. Oh yeah? You're being weirdly nice today, bro. Okay, I'll let you have a treat for that. Like I said, I'm not hungry. Ah, but don't mind me. Just go ahead and eat. Lunch will be over soon. You sure? Alright, if you say so. Arihiko claps his hands together and starts to eat his pastry. Credit to where credit is due. Arihiko does know his manners. Why are you here? <laughs> Hello there. I hear a familiar voice. Seal comes over, carrying what appears to be a lunchbox. Oh, don't you always get school lunch, Seal? No, I really don't have I don't really have a fixed lunch routine. It just depends on how I feel that day. Seal proudly produces a lunchbox from a cute little pouch. The box looks pretty big for her, given her frame. Immediately pack a lunch if you get up early enough? That's right. I usually don't manage to wake up before 7, so... Wait. What have you gotten me to say? No, that's not what I was going for. But it sounds like you aren't much of a morning person, are you? And not really. I have a hard time getting up this early, to be honest. I really have to push myself to make it for my volunteer work. My family actually used to run a bakery, so they've always got up really early in the morning, but I could never manage it, no matter how hard I tried. You can't imagine how, my ma uh, how mad my father got. A bakery? Arihiko and I glance at each other. I'm sure we're both picturing CL kneading dough with her delicate fingers before baking into a wood-fired oven that she somehow has in her apartment. In her apartment. <laughs> That's funny. My father and I fought over it for about three years, but in the end he told me, It'd be easier to work double duty than to teach you to be a baker. I never spoke of it again. After that, he let me wake up whenever I wanted. Seal puffs her chest out, brimming with pride. Really? Really? Never would have guessed. I fucking hated my father. <laughs> He's dead. I mean, you always look like you have it all together, Seal. Well, I try to look my best in front of you. The truth is, I can be a bit of a mess sometimes. I mean, hopefully, you mean the best of everybody and not just Tono. That might actually be true. 
Like her volunteer work, for one thing. Someone who, who had everything figured out probably wouldn't spend their time working for zero profit. I see. But personally, I like people like that. They're comfortable to be around. Arahiko nods in agreement. So you. Oh. So, you usually get lunch at school because you can't get up early enough to pack one, huh? Sorry, I apologize. I just saw the, um, well, well what's it called? My drink. That's why I was doing that. <clears throat> yes, exactly. But I do bring lunch time, uh, from time to time, like today. It's just ready made food I scrapped together, though. Do you two always get school lunch? Nah, we're the same as you. Depends on what we're feeling that day. My sister made lunch for me when I was a first year, but then I started doing whatever Tono does. He's all over the place. Eating at the calf sometimes, just snacking other times. Ah, so you're saying he could be fickle. I mean, that's not his fault. That's his anemia. Yeah, you got that right. Hanging with him can get pretty exhausting, so consider yourself warned. Seal nods in agreement as she takes the lid off her lunchbox. Half of the round container is filled with rice, the other half with side dishes. It's a fairly standard lunch, if, so, if somewhat large. Alright, well let's eat. Do you mind? Do you think your neighbor will mind if I borrow their seat? No, because I think that's Arihiko's seat right now. Takata oh. isn't here, so it's fair game. Besides, I'm sure he'd be honored to have you send his seat anyway. I half expect CL to put her lunchbox on my desk, but she sets up she sets it on her lap and begins eating. Arihiko stands across from her, tearing open a second pastry. Their voices fade into the background chatter as they blankly stare out the window. Hmm? You're not gonna have lunch, Tono. Yeah, I, I don't feel like eating today. Really? You won't be hungry? Weirdly enough, that's kind of how I was back in, especially high school. I did. I really. I legit did not eat lunch. I would eat breakfast, but like lunch, I just said fuck it. I just sat there, you know, chilling with the with the with the homies, the homeboys and the homegirls, you know. Uh, no, it's fine. It just happens every so often because of my condition. Besides, skipping one lunch isn't going to kill me. Wow, that's amazing. If I skipped a meal, I wouldn't be able to move a muscle. I'd probably faint from hunger. It's so embarrassing. I eat so much more than other girls, but I still get hungry again really quickly. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You're just more developed. What the fuck does that mean? You're just more. They say the more you got, the more energy you burn. That's all there is to it. I'm not sure that was the smoothest way to do it, but Arihiko's words tie a bow to that conversation. <laughs> the smoothest way. It's like. She's like, mmm. Eh, 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 no. <laughs> We're all growing teenagers here. She can as much or as little as she wants. 
Theo's expression is 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 indecipherable. I can't tell if she's flattered or embarrassed. But Tono, would you really be okay if you skip lunch? Yeah, don't worry. I go the entire day without eating pretty often. And I had breakfast today, so I'll make it to the end of the day, uh, no problem. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It doesn't sound like a healthy lifestyle. I have a condition. <laughs> I'm fine, seriously. I get regular checkups and everything. My doctor says I should be careful not to gain weight, so it's actually good for me to skip the occasional meal. The extra body mass would be nice and all, but staying slim is more important. I see. I didn't know boys had to watch their weight, too. I don't think he can do that. I mean, again, it's not willingly. <laughs> you know? He's got a condition, Seal. Seal looks at me for a moment, contemplating something, then closes the litter for lunchbox. Um, I just remembered something I have to do, so I need to excuse myself. Uh, don't mind me. In fact, do me a favor and forget everything that happened today. She quickly packs up her things and takes off. The hell was that about? <laughs> but damn. She's cute. Yes, yeah, she is. An awestruck Arihiko nods to himself co contended what contendedly? Huh. Not the word? Alright, but there we go. That's the next scene. I think that's where we're going to end it today, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, alright, we got to see CL again. Again, I don't know which route I'm going to go for. I don't know. I know I said, like, in the first video, that I was just going to, like, let the game just, you know, go with the flow and just go on based on my uh, decisions. But again, I don't know. Because even when I was playing this the first time around, I don't know how I would activate between choosing arc weight or cl i'm assuming it's just based on the decisions you choose obviously that's the whole point of the, this fucking game <laughs> is uh is just you know everything's based on your decision so i don't know what decisions i would have to pick in order to pick either or but uh, we'll find out later man so hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did like comment and subscribe it has been your boy white album i will see you guys next time